Hi, Jamie Davis, the pod medic for Innovations in Patient Care. We're here again from EMS Today 2013 in Washington, D.C. with another special episode video segment. And I'm here for the first time I get to interview Brian Webster, the CEO from Physio Control. And Brian, I'm really happy to get a chance to finally meet you at this event and get a chance to sit down and, and share some of your insights and thoughts uh, of, with the audience. I think it's important to get some of the, the pulse of the industry uh, from the leadership. And so I appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Yeah, I'm thrilled to be here. So I'm looking forward to it. So let's start off a little bit and talk about some of your background with physio control. Can you tell us a little bit about how you, where you started off and where you, how you came to be where you are today. Sure, I, uh, I've actually been at Physio Control for 21 years now, uh, so I've been in the industry for quite some time. When I joined the company, I was actually in the operations function of the company, uh, did that for a number of years, really had a good understanding of supply chain and you know how, to, how we manufacture the products. Uh, and then um, after a few years there, moved over into actually a sales role. Uh, and when we were just starting to commercialize AEDs in the industry and, and really uh, starting to expand that market, uh, went over and uh, led our team that, uh, that went out and, and uh, really started the growth of the AED industry. Uh, and then from there, uh, moved over into a global marketing role uh, where I was responsible for the marketing activities of the company. Uh, did that for a few years, and then uh, I've been in this role for about six years now. So I've had a good opportunity to kind of see the company from just about every angle, uh, which is uh, certainly helpful in a general management type role. So there's a lot of exciting things that Physio Control is get announcing or getting ready to announce that we get to talk about here, and I'm kind of excited about it. But let's start off with looking at um, some of the ways you've expanded LifeNet with uh, the, the updates to the stroke care guidelines recently. Mm -hmm. uh, you've made an announcement recently about stroke care and LifeNet. Yeah, LifeNet uh, is certainly an incredibly important platform for us. You know, when we originally designed LifeNet, um, it, the concept was we were going to build a data network that then we would be able to bring additional applications and, and functionality to over time. The first application on LifeNet, of course, was the 12 lead transmission, mm -hmm. which uh, many people really recognize LifeNet for today. Uh, but over time, we, we've added uh, many other uh, great features. One of the features that we added uh, around STEMIs was this notion that you could, with one simple push of a button uh, in the LifeNet system, you could activate an entire STEMI response team. We heard you know, a lot of feedback within uh, PCI centers that one of the challenges when they activate, uh, to, to activate a STEMI system is they have so many people to call. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have just a logistics problem. And so they said, well, what if you just gave us the ability to, in one you know, simple step, activate them all at the same time? Uh, with a cloud-based system like LifeNet, you have the ability to really uh, deliver that kind of mobility to all kinds of different devices. So that, that became then sort of the standard way we activate uh, STEMI teams. Mm -hmm. Now we're bringing that same capability to, uh, to stroke teams. It was great to see the new stroke guidelines come out here uh, recently. And of course, we've been working on how to further leverage the LifeNet uh, asset for our customers and uh, the ability to activate those stroke teams in a similar way, we think will will lead stroke teams to start to see the same type of improvements that the STEMI teams have had. And it's really around, you know, door to treatment times. Mm -hmm. uh, and clearly that's a big focus of the, of the new stroke guidelines. Uh, LifeNet uh, is, a, is a fantastic tool, very versatile tool for that. Um, and uh, we're pretty excited to roll that out to our customers. And, and it sounds to me like it's versatile enough to, to be developed for other applications that are similar to that maybe down the road. If you can activate for stroke activation and, and STEMI activation, certainly there are other emergency situations and teams that can be activated by it as well. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, our focus as a, as a company is really broader, although our, our history is certainly closely linked to cardiac. Uh, our focus as a company is broader than that. You know, we recognize that probably 90 plus percent of the calls that an EMS system goes on are non-cardiac events. 
And so we're really trying to develop our tools to be flexible to handle things like stroke and sepsis and trauma. You know, many, as you know, uh, many trauma centers have trauma activation teams. Mm -hmm. And so the notion of using LifeNet to activate a trauma uh, team is uh, pretty, pretty easy to see. Uh, but we also have de designed the system, it, you know, LifeNet was the first cloud-based system in our industry. Uh, we've designed it so that uh, you can continue to bring additional applications. So, for example, we have 30,000 life packs that are connected to LifeNet today. And uh, we can monitor those life packs uh, via LifeNet real time. So uh, if, a, if a customer in a particular location, for example, uh, maybe is uh, not handling their battery maintenance properly and the batteries are draining down, we can, via LifeNet, we can alert that customer, hey, on you know, Rig 16, you need to go check the battery on your, on your life pack. A lot of those kind of tools uh, on the operational side and then on the clinical side, it's really about taking all that great diagnostic uh, capability that comes out of the life pack mm -hmm. and being able to transmit that so that you know, care teams and practitioners can take that data and uh, not only real-time give advice on how to take care of patients, but use that data in the post-event area uh, when they try and build in the closed loop you know, CQA, uh, CQI uh, loops. Give the provider the, the opportunity to have they have that that I, I like to call the life packs the, the mobile diagnostic center yep. that you can carry around with you and uh, and to give you the ability to to transmit that information to utilize it to collect data from what you've done and, and, and look back and see how you've performed makes you a better provider and helps you innovate in your patient care yeah well and clearly with with healthcare in the U.S. And, and globally, it's it's really pay for performance is uh, becoming a bigger and bigger issue, and it'll it'll take tools like this that give people uh, real data that they can use and manipulate and aggregate to be able to demonstrate the performance of their systems. Uh, much like you heard from the the folks at London, you know they've used data and feedback and QA mm -hmm. to improve their performance. And you do that with tools like LifeNet and CoachStat Review and those kind of tools. So I get to, we get to talk about true CPR. Uh, it's been something that's kind of been on the horizon. And I've been waiting to get some information and, and find out more about this. Can you tell me a little bit about it? It's not out yet, but it's something that, that's coming soon. Yeah, we're very excited about uh, true CPR. It's uh, you know as, as you step back from our industry, of course, uh, in the in the sort of the late. 90s, uh, early 2000s, there was really starting to become much broader recognition that CPR was such a critical element in uh, resuscitation activities. And of course, that all led up to the 2005, uh, where there was a lot of real clinical practice changes that were driven by uh, the ERC and AHA guidelines. So that was a big you know, body of scientific study that led to those practice changes. And then from 2005 to really, really until now, um, those changes have been studied incredibly uh, in, the, in the scientific world. And what, what those, those things have found, of course, is a, is a couple of really critical things. Um, one is that people do really poor CPR. Mm -hmm. Uh, any of us who've done CPR know that doing really good CPR for any length of time is extremely difficult. Uh, and so, you know, one of our first answers to that problem, of course, was a fully automated device, a Lucas device, mm -hmm. which is now, you know, the far and away the market leader in automated CPR. Um, but we recognize that not every uh, provider uh, is going to use automated CPR. So we looked at how do we develop a CPR assist device um, that will help solve the issue of, of poor quality CPR, uh, but at the same time um, solve one of the other issues that the science has recently pointed out, which is that the accelerometer-based systems are not accurate on all surfaces. And, and in particular, when you're on a, a soft surface, uh, you know, a, a bed or a mattress that's on a, on a, a gurney, um, the accelerometers are not doing a good job of measuring distance, and so we've solved that uh, with this true PCR, uh, true CPR uh, product. Uh, we invented uh, a new technology called triaxial field induction, which gives us an ability to actually measure true and accurate uh, distance. It's very, very exciting, not only for today, uh, for what it's going to do around improving CPR, but if you think out. Uh, you know, a few years, once this product is on the market, 
it's also going to give the, the researchers, again, a whole other tool to go out and start researching not what the, you know, one specific generic recommendation is around depth and rate, but uh, how do you customize that for the patient? Because we all know that, you know, what I need for CPR is different than what you mm -hmm. need for CPR and the next person. So this is a, a huge step, we think, in the, in the ability to then study that, start to come up with, you know, AP ratios and things like that that will lead to uh, personalized medicine in this area. So we're very, very excited about it. The product is launched um, outside the U.S. We're uh, shipping it now. Um, and a lot of excitement. Uh, the customers outside the U.S. Uh, were uh, 510K pending in the U.S. So we're not actually showing it at the show here because it's not quite, uh, uh, doesn't have the 510K uh, approval yet, but we expect that uh, literally any day now. Okay. So uh, we'll be excited to get that on the market. And it'll be, a, it'll be a terrific tool, not only for clinical use, but for training use. And you know we know that that's a big focus for our customers is, is how to train on CPR. And this is gonna give you the ability to uh, use that tool in training. It's a reusable tool. So there is no disposable cost. Um, runs on a simple uh, off-the-shelf battery, so it's the, the the user interface is very simple. I think the customers are going to really enjoy it. Does it have the ability to collect data back to the life pack in a similar <coughs> way, so that we can start collect some of that data on depth and compression? Yeah. So so the the great thing about this product is it it gives you the ability to review data essentially in three different uh, time frames. One, it gives you real-time data, so it'll show you as you're, as you're performing CPR how you're doing. Uh, and that's obviously critical for that particular patient. It then gives you immediate post-event review. So as soon as, the, as soon as that case is over, you, you push a button and uh, your statistics, your performance statistics uh, are there. And that, that gives you, you know, a, a perform a performance around your depth and your rate uh, and it's going to give you that immediate feedback, which is terrific. And then the, the third area is really that more team level CQI where you can take that uh, data out, put it into CodeStat, uh, which is our uh, data review software, mm -hmm. and then look at the entire scene for that patient when you're talking about multi-rescuers and things like that. So it really gives you a lot of flexibility. And of course, once it's in CodeStat, it can be loaded into uh, the LifeNet system, mm -hmm. merged with the LifePak data, and you get a full picture. So wow. very, very exciting. That is exciting. That is exciting. I, I love to hear about all the amazing innovations <coughs> that, that Physio Control seems to be rolling out. I know there's more things in the pipeline you can't tell me about, but <laughs> that we'll have to save that for a future episode. Yep. But uh, for, for on behalf of <coughs> all the providers out there, and thank you for helping us to innovate and take care of our patients. Well, we're, uh, you know, what uh, our mission has been about innovation for 58 years. Um, you know, we've been in this industry for a long time. We just celebrated our one year anniversary of our uh, new independence mm -hmm. um, uh, after the uh, sale from Medtronic, and we've had a great year. We've really built a standalone, you know, half a billion dollar company in this last year, so it's been pretty exciting for us. Uh, and one of the great things about that, uh, that new independence and that structure is we're really doubling down when it comes to our investment in, in R&D and innovation. I think we've increased our uh, innovation spend by about 30% this year. So we know that we're entering a period where innovation is gonna be what's gonna drive growth and uh, improvements in clinical care for our customers. And so uh, we're really putting our money where our mouth is there. So you can expect a, a nice steady stream of innovation coming out of physio control. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting stuff not only in the near term coming out, but also uh, you know, in the medium and then longer term as well. So we're pretty excited about that. Well, Brian, thanks very much for being on Innovations in Patient Care and sitting down and talking with me. It's a pleasure meeting you finally, and, and hopefully we can have you back on the show again in the future. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And I want to thank all of you for checking out another episode of Innovations in Patient Care. I'm your host, Jamie Davis, the pod medic. I'll be back soon with another episode of Innovations in Patient Care. In the meantime, remember to stay safe and stay tuned here to Innovations in Patient Care.